meditation of the larger catechism of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church it comes to us this morning. We're looking at question number 173, which reads as follows. May any who profess the faith and desire to come to the Lord's Supper be kept from it. The answer is, such as are found to be ignorant or scandalous, notwithstanding their profession of the faith, and desire to come to the Lord's Supper, may and ought to be kept from that sacrament by the power which Christ hath left in His Church until they receive instruction and manifest their reformation. <clears throat> The Lord's Supper is given to us as a communion of fellowship with Christ and with His Church. And as we walk with Christ and with His people, then we have a right to the Lord's table. That table signifies to us our spiritual union with Christ and our walking with Him by grace. Sometimes we may have a desire to come and approach that table, but not properly be prepared for the communion meal. Perhaps we should... Uh, stay away from that meal after an examination of ourselves. We might see that within us there is yet remaining sin that is not repented of, and so therefore we should not take part in the communion meal. At the same time, not only do you have a responsibility in approaching the meal to examine yourself and to see whether you are prepared or worthy of taking part in the communion meal, the church also, through its ordained officers, has a similar responsibility to evaluate the church and to determine whether those who approach the table have a right to the communion meal. Uh, the communion is not merely to be offered uh, to everyone who would desire to take, like, take part in that, but it should be reserved towards those who are walking with Christ. And those who are called to be officers in Christ's church have a special responsibility to, in, in the old Scottish words, to fence the table of the Lord's Supper, to keep away from the table those who do not have a right to the communion meal. And the uh, Catechism highlights two particular uh, situations where uh, the elders in particular would have that responsibility. Now mind you, the elders are commissioned by Christ as those who are given authority or rule within His church. And they bear responsibility for, before Christ for your souls. And so therefore, as they offer the elements of communion, they have a concern for your spiritual well-being. And a concern that you walk with Christ. And Christ has given them a certain measure of judgment, discernment, uh, over the spiritual condition of those who are entrusted to their care. And so whereas the individual themselves might feel that they have a right to the communion meal, the elder, being more mature, hopefully, in spiritual things and understanding the scriptures more carefully, would know that this person should not take part in the communion meal. Now, that decision on the part of the elder will not be a private decision of the elder himself on his own, but rather will be a part of a sessional decision with regard to the membership. So it will be a decision by the session that uh, for the sake of Christ's church, a certain individual or individuals will not be permitted to approach the Lord's table. That is one way in which the church exercises discipline in its midst. The elders are entrusted with that care for the congregation. So those, first of all, who are ignorant should not be admitted to the Lord's Supper. They may not understand the nature of the communion meal. They may have misconceptions about it or no idea at all what it means, and so therefore they are not prepared to take part in that communion meal. They may not understand the gospel well enough to give just a basic professional faith. And so therefore they also should not be welcomed into the, meal, the communion meal. That's one reason why we do not bring children, particularly small infant children, to the communion meal because they don't show the necessary understanding of the things of the gospel that would qualify them uh, to take part in the communion meal. So ignorance, whether it's the part of a child that needs just to grow and mature, or an adult who just does not understand the gospel, 
uh, is one reason why you should not take part in the community meal and why another should not uh, welcome you to that, that particular meal. At the same time, those who are scandalous, uh, that is a word that has the idea of someone who uh, engages in uh, open sin, unrepentant sin, a, a, a bold sin uh, that is uh, something that becomes a disruption to the peace and purity of Christ's church. Under those circumstances, that individual as well should not be welcomed into the communion meal. Uh, I've known uh, some uh, members of other churches, other communions, not Presbyterian churches, marvel at how the communion meal was open to all kinds of people who came to that communion service. And people knew in the pews the lives of others in the pews and knew that this guy was involved in drugs, another guy was involved in all, you know, all kinds of things. How could they be accepted before the communion meal? That pollutes the supper, it pollutes the church, it brings uh, great reproach to Christ and his kingdom. And so therefore those who are scandalous in their lives should not be admitted to the table. Even though... Even though they make a profession of faith, and even though they have a desire to take part in the communion meal, the church has a responsibility through its elders uh, to refuse them uh, participation in the communion meal. Uh, that's not something that needs to be ongoing forever. The purpose of discipline, the purpose of withholding communion, is for the restoration of the offender, or the reformation of the offender and the instruction of those who are ignorant. There is a goal in mind here, not to be mean, not to be super spiritual or super holy, holier than thou, but rather it is for the growth and progress of the individual in their spiritual life, that they might understand the truths of the gospel that they might make the proper changes in their lives to reform and become more uh, conforming to Jesus Christ. And so the goal will be their restoration, their participation in the communion, communion meal in a worthy manner. And so the Catechism reminds us that first we need to examine ourselves to see whether we have an appropriate uh, mindset to approach the Lord's table. And at the same time, the church needs to examine you Elders need to be examining those to whom they uh, give that communion meal and ensure that uh, each one is walking with Christ.